Hello and welcome to workshop 10. And so this time what we're going to be doing is talking statistics. So you've just started doing statistics. And as, you know, when I was young, we were brought up believing in three types of lies. There's lies, damned lies, and statistics. And unfortunately for engineers and people in science, statistics are often abused by people. Statistics particularly are abused by politicians, um, by marketing people and by the education department. Um, so yeah, I mean, statistics, when used properly in a scientific or an engineering context are a very powerful and a very useful tool. <clears throat> Though there is a famous quote from Ernest Rutherford that says that if you have to use statistics to prove your theorem, then you should design a better experiment. But, but the thing about statistics there's an old joke, 95% of statistics made up on the spot. Like I just made that figure up on the spot. But the thing about statistics is there's two types. Of, there's things, linked events or unlinked events. So we're going to be talking about the unrelated events ones. Like if I throw these die, each dice, if, they're, if these are a true die or a true die, each time I throw them, there should be one chance in six that'll turn up with a six. This one's going, let's try it. Now, obviously it's not, you know, there we go. Not going to behave for me when there's somebody looking, but so technically there's one chance in six. So if I were to throw all of these dice, each individual dice has one chance in six of turning up a six. But I can't specifically state which dice is going to turn up as a six. That one might, or that one might, or that one. But what I can say is if I look, look at the group, I can predict that if I'm throwing six dice, there's sort of roughly one chance of six that I'll get, well, roughly in chance that I'll get a six. I should get a six most times. Now, so what this means is for a lot of stuff that we're doing as engineering, we can't predict the behavior of a single unit, but what we can do is predict the behavior of a large group. And this can be lead to interesting stuff. Like let's take this dice example. This is one of my absolute favorite experiments. Say we have a hundred dice. So number of dice. And this is going to be T, which is the throw number. So if I start off, I've got 100 dice. And what we're going to do for this experiment is throw the dice. And every time there's a, six, a dice comes up with a six on it, I'm going to remove those, those dice. And then I'm going to repeat it again. So throw number one, I took a couple of dice out. I don't take any out on number two. Number three, I take out number. But if we were to do this with a hundred dice or even a thousand dice, what we end up with is the number of dice over time looks like that. And hopefully you've done enough math by now to realize that that's an exponential um, decay. So the number of dice equals the original number of dice times e to the minus, minus k number of throws. So while we cannot predict the behavior of a single die, we can predict the behavior of the population. And I mean, this works in things like radioactive decay, for example, but also things like erosion events, anything that's got an exponential decay amount of drug, uh, capacitor discharge curves. Uh, this happens a lot of the time. So we, like in capacitors, we can't tell the behavior of a single electron, but we can tell the behavior of a population. And unfortunately, they also applied this to humans. If I say, let's meet in Cambridge at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, I can roughly predict, with practice, I can roughly predict how many will be early, how many will be late, how many won't show up at all, and who will be on time. Unfortunately, we, people are starting to apply this to humans, which I, yeah, but this leads to what we call the fallacy of large numbers. And 
this is something you really have to watch out for. Numbers. And this is actually one of the ways that casinos make money is because people fall for this fallacy all the time. So say I throw a die and I want to throw a six. Yeah, I throw a six. Every time I throw that die, die there's one chance in six it will turn up as a six. That's if it's a true die. But say I to throw this die times in a row, 100 times in a row, what's the chance that the next time, if, and it doesn't turn up a six, so I've done 100 throws in a row and it's not a six. What's the chances that the next time I throw it, it will be a six? And the answer is very similar. It's one in six, because every time you throw it, it's not related to previous events. But us as humans, we'll go, oh, it hasn't come up six for a long time. It must be due a six. We must. And people will bet on it. And that's how casinos make money, because they know its chance is going to be one in six. And humans go, oh, it must be about to come due. It must be owing now. So the fallacy of large numbers is if you have it do stuff a lot of times and it doesn't come up, then you're expecting it to come due any time. Oh, and that also works for things like earthquakes. If you have like a one, one in a thousand year earthquake, and we haven't, in theory, any year, there's an equal chance that we'll have an earthquake. But we tend to go, oh, it hasn't had one for a while, so it must be due now. No, there is a little more relationship there. So the thing about stats is stats are actually quite important. Uh, stats are important, as I said, for weather events and um, civil engineering, if you're building stuff, um, flood planes, you know, one in every 10,000 years. But they're also important for us when we're, say, buying bits or doing stuff like that. After all, if we were to buy, one of the most important things from the state, space program and things like that, standardization. Actually, we can go back to Whitlock, the standardization back in the 1880s or whenever. If I was to buy a nut or a bolt, let's buy a bolt and get nuts to go on the bolt. Now, it is really, really, really important or can be really important that these are precise sizes, which is why we've got M6s and M8s and things like that too get the exact size. But not every nut and not every bolt is going to be manufactured identically. There's going to be variations. And if we get outside the variation, bad things can happen. Like there's a famous flight where a pilot, flying commissioner airliner, they put in the bolt and the bolt was, the shaft diameter was like a thousandth of an inch. So what's that? Like a 20th of a mil out or 40th, the wrong size. All the, uh, all the bolts came out, the pilot went out the window. Thankfully, they should just save them. But that was just fractionally out. That's how the precision we build stuff or engineer stuff to nowadays. So when we buy a bunch of bolts, let's say technically the bolts are 100 millimeters long. Not every bolt is going to be 100 millimeters long. So this is the number. Hopefully, most are going to be about them. But there's going to be some variation. 99, uh, let's make that 101, 99. And hopefully, anything that's too short is going to be thrown away. And anything too long is going to be thrown away and never hit. And if you've got lots of machines making lots of nuts and bolts and things, that was one of the greatest achievements in engineering is that I can grab any M8 bolt, any M8 bolt, and I grab any M8 nut, and I can stick that nut on that bolt. And that requires huge, uh, huge quality control, which involves bell curves. So when we're doing this, we statistically analyze a lot of stuff. We take them out, we measure them, anything that's too small, throw away, anything that's too big, throw away. That means any two nuts and bolts will match, which is, take my word for it, it's amazing in engineering. It's one, one of the things that allows us to do engineering. So 
But we can't predict immediately what length any nut or bolt is, but we can plot them on a graph. Bink, and we then we end up with the standard Gaussian distribution, also known as normal distribution, also known as a bell curve. And this we use all the time in engineering for quality for control for buying bits for standardization parts. You will see this a lot. Okay, so I'll let uh, Doc Brown cover this and I'll get back to you with more of this next week. Good luck on the problems. And so statistics are useful, they're just damned irritating. <laughs>